Welcome to Study IQ. My name is Bhuvan Apurvajha, and this is the editorial edge for Tuesday, the first of August, two zero two three. Thanks for joining, Deepak, Bulbul, Mandeep. Good morning, guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining. So uh, on the agenda today, we have uh, four uh, topics, four articles. Okay, the first one is going to be an article from the Indian Express. We'll uh, first understand about space debris. We'll also seek to understand what's the uh, liability, the international convention on space debris and its space liability. You know, what is that about, and uh, what are the different facets of the space liability? Thereafter, the second topic we'll take a look at is the Aditya L1 mission. Okay, on the August uh, the twenty sixth, which is just twenty five days from now on, India will launch its uh, Sun observation mission. Okay, so we have covered Mars, we have covered Moon. Today we will cover India's Sun mission. Okay, Aditya L1 mission. Now, uh, primary importance in this is not just again the payloads of the mission, what is the launch vehicle, all of that we will take a look at, but also we'll go deep dive into understanding the Lagrange points. Okay, like you must be seeing this Aditya L1 mission. So, what does L1 mean? Okay. How many different types of L ones, L twos, L threes are there? Okay, and what is the use of each point? We need to understand that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Thereafter, the last topic of the day, we'll take a look at section one forty four. So again, we have had uh, section one forty four imposed near the national capital. So we'll take a look at what exactly is section one forty four. You know, we must have often read about it. We'll just take a deep dive into understanding what exactly is Section One Forty Four and how is it different from, say, curfew. Okay, who can go ahead and impose Section One Forty Four? Does it always need to be, say, a district magistrate? Does it always have to be an IAS officer, or can say an IPS also go ahead and impose Section One Forty Four? What is probably that one point where a police officer is also given this particular uh, privilege? We'll take a look at that. Okay, Rajan, good morning. Ajay, good morning. Thanks for joining, guys. ठीक है, so that's going to be our agenda. Let's get into it. So uh, first questions. First, we'll take a look at the questions from yesterday. So we discussed Nawab Wajid Ali Shah, and we discussed about General Sleeman. So the first question: General Sleeman is credited with suppression of Thagi. In fact, Lord Bentick was. You must have read about Lord Bentick being the guy who went ahead and suppressed Thagi, but then he was say like the the you know the main person. But the actual person doing it on the ground on behalf of Lord Bentick, his captain was in fact General Sleeman. So this is correct. General Sleeman is credited with the first recorded discovery of dinosaur fossils in India near Jabalpur. Okay, he writes about this in his account, in fact. And then that uh, dinosaur fossil is sent to London. There it is studied, and then it is officially recorded as the first instance of dinosaur fossils in India. Okay, and then the third one that his account of the two wild children. Inspired the character of Mowgli is absolutely correct. Written by Rudyard Kipling. Okay, this is again he had written down in his accounts when he was posted in uh, Madhya Pradesh, I believe, and so then that becomes the inspiration for Rudyard Kipling to go ahead and write Jungle Book with the main character being Mowgli. All of us must have seen or read or heard about Mowgli, right? Take it. Correct, Ajay. Welcome. Good morning, guys. Welcome. Welcome. So all three are correct here. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Lucknow was the capital of the state of Oudh, with the Nawab's court being held there. Unfortunately, Lucknow was not the capital; it was Faisalabad, which was the capital. And you found that the regent was in fact in Lucknow, which is why, if you just look at the architecture of Lucknow, you will see it's inspired by Victorian architecture. A lot of the buildings inspired by Victorian architecture. So that should give you the obvious hint. That means that the English came and settled there, which means the regent. The person who was, in fact, handling the state of affairs of uh, the state of Awadh on behalf of the company, he was stationed in Lucknow, which means General Sleeman, the person who was in the previous slide, he was there in Lucknow, whereas the Nawab would would be in Faisalabad. So, which of the above are correct? Well, none of them. Both are incorrect. All right, let's go forward. So, the Treaty of Allahabad was signed between uh, Shah Alam II and Robert Clive. Correct. Treaty was signed in the aftermath of Battle of Baksar. Again, correct. So it's a, this was a relatively easy question. Not much problems here. Let's go forward. Bering Strait separates Atlantic and Pacific. In fact, it separates 
Arctic and Pacific. Okay, when you look at say the geographical entities, it separates Russia and uh, United States. But then Bering Straits, as two geographical entities, separates uh, Arctic Ocean and Pacific Ocean. And the Sea of Okhotsk is a sterile marine area. In fact, it is biodiversity rich. Sterile means it has got nothing in it; it's dead. But what you find is that the Sea of Okhotsk is a biodiversity rich water body. All right. So the statements above, well, none of the statements again correct here. Let's go forward. Kalidas, did he write Kumar Sambhava? Absolutely. What is the story of Kumar Sambhava? It is about the birth of Bhagwan Kartike, the son of Bhagwan Shiva and Ma Parvati. Okay, yeh yad rakh lena Kumar Sambhava is the story of the birth of Kartike. Okay, the son of Lord Shiva and Parvati. Right. So this is a poem. In fact, it's a poem. <clears throat> One of the most classical, famous poems so far, written by Kalidas. So this is correct. So Shrut, did he write Bhrat Samhita? No. In fact, Bhrat Samhita is a book on astrology and astronomy. And you know that Shrut was someone who was to do with medicine and surgery. Why would he write a book on astrology? Right. It was in fact Varahmir who wrote Bhrat Samhita, whereas Sushrut is the one who is credited with the Hippocratic Oath, the oath that doctors take before they operate on a particular person. Okay, it's a oath of good faith, an oath of commitment for the well-being of the person. Okay, so again, these two are incorrectly matched. <coughs> Excuse me. So just one. All right, and finally the last question. <clears throat> Mahatma Gandhi visited AIR just once in his entire lifetime. In fact, on 12th of November, I believe the year was 19, uh, I have to check, but 1947, when he was addressing a group of refugees in Kurukshetra. Okay, and so there was no way that he could have reached those persons. He wanted to offer solace. He wanted to offer his sympathies. He wanted to be standing besides them. However, he couldn't travel to Kurukshetra, so that was the only time. That Mahatma Gandhi came on All India Radio. Then, obviously, it was under British control, and then used the airwaves of AIR to address those refugees. Okay, so again, uh, when you look at it, AIR and Mahatma Gandhi just once. So this is correct. And that particular day, 12th of uh, November 1947, that is celebrated as Public Service Broadcasting Day. So both are correct here. Okay, AIR again, a uh, body under Prasar Bharati. An autonomous body of the government of India, the other constituent being Doordarshan. Okay, know about your bodies. Okay, so this is, these are the group of individuals who answered correctly. Okay, and I am immensely grateful for their participation. Uh, Fervin, Shubham, Asha, Jyotsna, Pranjal, Mandeep, Tanu, Pooja, Evergreen, Lekam, and Karuna. Lekam, please pardon me this small mistakes, small typo. Okay, but to the rest, go ahead, be a part of this. You see, the questions are designed to test your understanding on the lecture that we have. It's an intensive one-hour session. There is no chit-chatting. We look at the topics. We understand questions. Outcome-based learning is the focus. Okay? No problem, Saka. Aaj ka try karna ap, and I hope you feel better. Asha, good morning. Okay, let's go forward, guys. So the first topic I have for you. Now you must have seen the particular news where a particular space debris. You must have seen the news saying that okay, it was a part of. An ISRO mission that was found in Australia. Okay, some obviously newspaper reports went overboard and said, "Oh, it was related to the recent uh, Chandrayaan uh, launch." Obviously incorrect, because what was seen was that this particular cylindrical body, okay, the cylindrical-looking uh, structure, in fact, this came up on the shores. Oh my God, what's my drawing like? Okay, this cylindrical structure, this came up on the shores of Australia. And what was found was that it had a lot of barnacles. Do you know what barnacles are? You know, you have this sea growth. Whenever something stays in the ocean for a long time, you have this sea growth, sea growth that comes up on the sides of objects, metallic or non-metallic. Okay. So those barnacles were also observed. So what does that tell you? That that particular entity had been in the water for a long time. So it could obviously not be related to Chandrayaan. So what was eventually found out was that it was of an older mission, a PSLV IRNSS mission. And that eventually has now washed up to the Australian shores. Okay, it was found here near Perth. There is a bay. In fact, it's called Jurian Bay. This is where that particular entity from ISRO was found. Now, obviously, straight away first, let's establish the facts. 
नॉट कनेक्टेड टू चंद्रयान ठीक है सो इट वॉज इट इज अगेन थॉट टू बी ऑफ दिस पर्टिक्युलर मिशन दैट वॉज जस्ट ओवर लाइक सम टाइम अगो ठीक है एंड सो वट डू वी अंडरस्टैंड पी एस एल वी फोर स्टेज रॉकेट पावर्ड बाई सॉलिड एंड लिक्विड फ्यूल्स लेट्स गो बैक थ्रू द पी एस एल वी फर्स्ट ओके इट हैज ऑपरेटेड मोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया मेजर मिशन चंद्रयान यू मस्ट नो वॉज ऑन एल वी एम थ्री ओके वन ऑफ इंडिया हैवीएस्ट लॉन्च वेहीकल्स हाउ एवर टू द रेस्ट इफ यू सी यू नो यू लुक एट से चंद्रयान वन और यू लुक एट मंगल यान और वट विल अंडरस्टैंड टूडे आदित्य एल वन मिशन ऑल ऑफ दैम विल बी यूजिंग पी एस एल वी सो देर इन इज योर फर्स्ट डिफरेंस चंद्रयान थ्री द रिसेंट वन वॉज ऑन एल वी एम थ्री मेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस गाइज आई एम श्योर यू मस्ट नो इट बाई नाउ right whereas the rest that you're looking at say uh, the sun mission that is proposed to uh, take place on august the 26th just 25 days from now so that is going to be using pslv theek hai so obviously know about the stages first stage solids second stage liquids third stage by solids and fourth by liquids alternatively it goes okay remember the stages good morning rani welcome welcome theek hai Okay, so let's go forward and understand now what are the rules. What happens when you say blast off a rocket in space, and then it goes there and it say hits uh, another NASA satellite? Are you responsible for that? Absolutely. Okay, so you must have seen say it when we talk about plastic pollution, guys. Understanding me focus करो अब. When you talk about plastic pollution, a particular topic or a particular uh, term that you must have been introduced to is extended producer. रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी सुना है ये वट डज दैट मीन दैट सपोज इफ यू आर प्रोड्यूसिंग प्लास्टिक योर कंपनी एबीसी ओके योर कंपनी एबीसी इज प्रोड्यूसिंग प्लास्टिक सो योर रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फॉर द प्लास्टिक डज नॉट एंड बाई द मेयर फैक्ट दैट यू हैव सोल्ड द प्लास्टिक टू से मी नो इट इज स्टिल योर रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू प्रोसेस द प्लास्टिक रिसाइकल इट मेक श्योर दैट इट इज सेफली डिस्पोज ऑफ और रिसाइकल्ड वट एवर Do you understand that? So that is extended producer responsibility, where your responsibility goes beyond, say, just the first part, the limiting factor. Good morning, Chandra Shekhar, boy. Namaskar. Okay. So now this is the central tenet of the rules governing space debris. Also, that you launch a vehicle in space does not mean that a successful launch has been done. Then, yes, yes, work is done. After that, even if it is orbiting. or if you say choose to go ahead and dismantle it in space suppose if it has become old now okay now it has become old so you go ahead decommission it deorbit it it's called deorbiting okay so you go ahead and deorbit your particular space application your particular thing that you have in space now eventually some of it obviously is there in the orbit itself okay it will keep be there in, being there in the orbit some of it will fall down into earth while in the process of falling down into earth immense friction caused by the entry into the atmospheric uh, circulation in the atmospheric area most of it is burnt however some if it is falling again it reaches the land aur tumhare sir pe gira wo suppose huh? so who is responsible then so which means that in that case suppose if you are hit by a space debris okay so if i have commissioned if i have put the uh, rocket in space i am still responsible for it that is extended producer responsibility ठीक है समझ रहे हो आप लोग ना लुक एट इट सो इट रिप्रेजेंट्स अ मेजर थ्रेट टू स्पेस फेयरिंग नेशन केपेबिलिटी टू स्पेस सेफ स्पेस एक्टिविटी वॉट हैपन्स एडिशनली ऑल्सो सो यू हैव अ पर्टिकुलर बॉडी दैट इज ऑर्बिटिंग इन स्पेस ना ऑब्वियसली अ लॉट ऑफ फिजिक्स इज एट प्ले नो एवरी थिंग इज मनूवर टू द लास्ट डिटेल सडनली यू हैव अ फॉरन ऑब्जेक्ट कम थ्रू इट ऑफ इट्स कोर्स योर होल मिशन विल बी जॉपर्डाइज यू रियलाइज so even a minor thing at that altitude at say a very high velocity can cause a lot of damage structural damage along with say throwing you of course okay so you have say the international space station so it operates a ballistic shield sort of mechanism to make sure that it is not hit by these sort of small small space debris okay so let's look at it now the falling space debris you know, normally it lands in oceans or uninhabited areas so in the case so you have this मल्टी स्टेज रॉकेट्स तुमने देखा होगा ना आफ्टर अ पर्टिकुलर थिंग अ पार्ट ऑफ इट सेपरेटेड विच मीन्स इट फेल डाउन समवेयर ना आइडियली इट इज मनूवर्ड इन सच अ वे डिजाइंड इन सच अ वे दैट इट फॉल्स ओवर से एम टी ओशन एरिया और से डेजर्ट एरिया ओके ना अगेन जस्ट बिकॉज इट इज फॉलोइंग इन द ओशन नाउ वट हैपन्स 
इमीडिएट थ्रेट टू लाइफ मिनिमल रहता है बिकॉज एवरीथिंग इज कैलकुलेटेड टू द लास्ट डेसिमल हियर सो वट हैपन्स इवेंचुअली यू हैव द स्पेस डेबरी दैट मेटेलिक ऑब्जेक्ट फॉलोइंग इन द सी नाउ एडिंग टू द मरीन पॉल्यूशन नाउ इन द चांस दैट दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑब्जेक्ट दैट हैज फॉल इन टू द सी वॉशेज इन टू द टेरिटोरियल बाउंड्री ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर कंट्री देन द प्रॉब्लम अराइजेस ओके दैट इट मे नॉट नेसेसरी नहीं है कि आपके घर के ऊपर ही गिरे आपके बाउंड्री के पास में भी गिरा और आपके टेरिटरी के अंदर आ गया स्टिल दिस लाइबिलिटी किक्स इन ठीक है तो अब आप समझो कैसे होता है ऑब्वियस यू आर लुकिंग एट मरीन पोल्यूशन प्लस एक्सीडेंटल लैंडिंग इन द ऑफ चांस दैट इट हैपेंस नाउ सपोज इट वॉश इज अप ऑन योर शोर्स इट लैंडेड अब सपोज दिस इज आवर कंट्री इट लैंडेड अप समवेयर हियर इवेंचुअली वॉस्ट गोवा के कोस्ट पे आ गया कैन इंडिया क्लेम दिस पर्टिकुलर कन्वेंशन एब्सोल्यूटली इट कैन ओके सो द कन्वेंशन ऑन इंटरनेशनल लाइबिलिटी फॉर डैमेज कॉज्ड बाय स्पेस ऑब्जेक्ट्स 1972 इट केम इन टू फोर्स नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द की आर्ग्यूमेंट्स अबाउट इट ओके सो द होल जॉब ऑफ दिस लाइबिलिटी दिस स्पेस लाइबिलिटी डैमेज लाइबिलिटी is to support the outer space treaty which is considered to be in a way the magna carta of space law okay this is the primary framework the overarching framework that defines or governs law in space india is a signatory is a party to it theek hai samajh mein aa raha hai aapko abhi tak aap samjho pehle why is why is the problem in there good morning ravindra I hope you guys are catching it. Okay. So now, what does it deal with? Two instances. One, that your rocket goes and hits another uh, particular, say, space station or a satellite. In that case, again, you have the Convention on uh, International Liability for Damage Caused by Space Objects apply. Number one, to other space assets, you can't go ahead and crash into another country's, say, space station. Huh? And second, if you are going ahead and re-entering deorbiting your thing or if some technical malfunction happens and suppose that thing is now falling breakneck speed towards mother earth in that case whatever damage is caused on the surface of the earth covered under this particular convention clear so now look at this absolutely liable to pay compensation okay extended producer responsibility this is the central tenet that governs space law especially this convention on international damage okay now look at this this is what is in the case of australia now even if the space has fallen into the ocean and then swept to the store to the shores to the beaches it necessary nahi hai ki aapke ghar ke upar aake aapke sir ke upar gire okay it can fall anywhere around your say boundary and if it crosses into your boundary and comes to your uh, shore this is apl applicable however what's the difference what's the catch here so you have a particular uh, rocket component that comes and hits you on your head you are say seriously injured can you as an individual sue say country x that might have launched that particular rocket no you can't not given this particular uh, convention this international liability is not applicable for you as an individual or corporations no they have to be represented at a government level so you will approach the government of india सेंग सरकार मेरे सिर पे तो ये गिर गया रॉकेट गिर गया देन द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया विल टेक इट अप एंड देन इट विल बी लाइक अ स्टेट वर्सेस स्टेट अफेयर समझ रहे हो आप ठीक है सो दिस इज हैपेंड ओनली वंस सो फार वे कैनेडा सूड रशिया दे ऑप्टेन अराउंड थ्री मिलियन डॉलर्स इन डैमेज ओके इट फेल इन टू अगेन एन एनवायरमेंटली सेंसिटिव एरिया एंड सो कैनेडा वेंट अहेड एंड सूड रशिया फॉर दिस सो द क्लेम लाइज स्टेट वर्सेज स्टेट so you have to approach the government the government will take up your claim against say the launching organization and its country okay this is the whole convention on international liability for damage caused by space objects let's go forward let's look at this question now this question i'll just because i have to give you the answer for this so look at this this is earth okay you know about the low earth orbit we have discussed orbits previously extensively in fact right so what happens this scenario where you have a lot of space debris okay this low earth orbit is completely filled anyways you know right now that the low earth orbit is getting crowded because again most of the countries are going ahead and launching satellites academic institutions colleges schools jiske paas bhi thoda sa know how hai thoda sa reach hai go ahead and launch one satellite so what is happening it's getting crowded out there space is limited the low earth orbit the whole definition of it is limited so what is this 
this theoretical scenario in which the earth's orbit is overpopulated with objects and debris right that you have like a space jam that is created right so thus you cannot launch more satellites the space jam is essentially called as the kessler syndrome make a note of this i am giving you the answer for the first one the rest you will attempt okay so this space jam that is created is called the kessler syndrome okay this was again a us astrophysicist who came up with this but then this concept is again very very uh, pertinent for a civil service aspirant especially because again you are looking at the whole uh, space population happening over population of satellites in space the low earth orbit at least especially theek hai so this was your first question i have given you the answer to this you will answer me this for me in the comment box okay so i have questions a b c d f you will answer each of them individually and let me know so that uh, the correct answers can be figured uh, out and uh, mentioned in tomorrow's class okay so project netra is india's early warning system to detect space debris correct or incorrect india is a party to the outer space treaty is it a party to the space liability convention that we discussed today and moon treaty go ahead and read about it for five spend five minutes today to uh, read about the moon treaty and let me know the correct answers okay can someone also tell me what is the netra has anyone heard of the netra aircraft can someone tell me what's the netra aircraft if you guys have been watching say your republic day parades rather than sleeping that morning you will know what the netra aircraft is it's called our i in the sky okay this is the term it's used our i in the sky i've given you a hint kya kaam karta hoga netra bataiye if the term that i'm using to define it is our i in the sky this is it, what it's called advanced early warning control and aircraft system okay advanced early warning control and aircraft system okay it's essentially a surveillance aircraft avax bolte hai na correct okay it's a called an i in the sky okay know about your aircraft have a genuine interest in the defense of your country then you will be able to make better sense of say the defense reforms and this and that be genuinely curious that's the first rule of being uh, preparing for civil services be genuinely curious nahi to rat ke to ho gaya hi nahi isme theek hai okay this one meteorites are categorized as space debris the first slide of uh, the first point of my slide whether space debris is just human made or is it all uh, compo components let me know is space debris completely human made or say the no natural organic thing that is moving around can also be categorized as space debris you let me know this only a state shall bring forward a claim against the state under the space liability convention yes or no extended producer responsibility is the guiding framework of the space liability convention identify the incorrect statements you will also let me know the answer to this okay and figure out ye thoda sa dekhenge aap whether space debris is just human made or is it all material that is there in the space okay all right uh, before we go on to the next one so this began yesterday evening i had the orientation the introduction class to the aranya series the whole end to end focus of environment and ecology and forest and climate change for upsc civil services tomorrow evening wednesday evening is when we will have the first official lecture wherein we'll get underway with the syllabus we'll start with the basics habitat ecology ecological niche ecosystems terrestrial aquatic biomes all of that so if you have trouble figuring out the difference between all of the terms that i just told you join me tomorrow evening 9 pm okay and the entire playlist of this series free of cost coming to you the entire syllabus of environment ecology forest climate change will be available in the playlist uh, section of study iq ias okay make sure that you join me for this it will be immensely incredibly helpful for you all right so tomorrow evening 9 pm on study iq english make sure that you join me for this guys okay now let's go to the aditya l1 mission so this will be a little intensive focus karna ab bas ratne ka dhyan nahi hai figure out karenge aasani se ho jayega theek hai so aditya l1 mission the first space indian mission to study the sun 
obviously Aditya in Hindi is a Sanskrit term in fact, it's for the Surya God, Sun Devta, Bhagwan, uh, Surya Devta ke liye, Theek hai? so Aditya is the uh, Paryavachi of Sun, okay, so straight away, the India Sun mission, PSLV is being used as opposed to in Chandrayaan 3, you were using LVM3, okay, first difference will straight away go on making sure that we know our differences, this is going to use the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, Chandrayaan-3 used uh, the LVM-3. Now, the spacecraft shall be placed around the Lagrange point of the Sun-Earth system, L1. So, we will seek to understand today, in the next say 15 minutes, the differences between L1 to L5. Okay. What is L1, what is L2, L3, L4, L5? The different points that you have say within the Sun and the Earth system, wherein you are going to use the gravitational forces of both these bodies along with centrifugal force and Coriolis force to achieve a particular balance which gives you an uninterrupted view of the sun. Or you don't want the sun, you want complete darkness, there is also a Lagrange point for that. Why is important now? Because Lagrange points, those particular points that I am going to show you, depending on where you place your satellite or your object, there are different uses. So, for example, in a particular Lagrange point, you might have a usage of uninterrupted view of the sun. No eclipses, nothing happening. It's clear shot at them. A particular Lagrange point might be completely in darkness, which means you're looking at observing deep space. You need darkness to observe deep space, no? The Hubble telescope or Gaia telescope, if you've heard of these names, okay? The Hubble telescope <coughs> or you have these GAIA. Okay, they are all deep space uh, objects that you are looking for. So, you need darkness for them, which means you need a particular Lagrange point. We will take a look at this. Okay? So, now please understand what is this now. When you are putting it around the L1 point, you are looking at continuously viewing the sun. Obviously, sun mission hai. Ab agar sun hi chup gaya to kahe ka mission. Which means you need complete, uninterrupted, unhindered view of the sun at all times. Which is why we have gone ahead and focused on L1, okay? So, let's look at what's going to happen here now. Let's look at L1. Lagrange points are positions in space where the gravitational forces, look at the forces first, okay? <coughs> exam perspective, what is the examination going to ask you? The first question that comes to my mind, for a particular point, okay? What are the forces acting? MCQ kisse banega dekho pehle? What are the forces acting? The gravitational force of both the sun and the earth. You are also looking at what? Uh, centrifugal force. Right? You are looking at centrifugal force and you are looking at the Coriolis force. Forces acting, gravitational. So, gravitational plus centrifugal plus Coriolis of each body. That is necessary for you to determine that particular point in the Sun-Earth system which is stable or unstable depending on your requirement. What is the L1 position now? Look at this. First understand, the closer you are to the Sun, okay, the smaller your orbit is, the faster you are going to move, right? And the farther away you are from the Sun, the slower you will complete your orbit which is why say Pluto's or one particular movement around the sun is many years, right? Mercury does it lot faster. So, this is the problem, this is our assumption here, that the closer an object is to the sun, the faster it moves. So, any spacecraft going around the sun in a, in a orbit smaller than the earth, okay? If you are in this particular territory, you are looking at what? If the earth is here, you are already here. When the earth is here, you are already here. You are going faster than the sun, right? So, there is a loophole in this whole conundrum now. What is the loophole that we are looking at? That if the spacecraft is placed directly between the sun and the earth, you are looking to achieve balance between the earth's gravity and the sun's gravity. So, at a particular position here, between this area, between the earth to the sun, there will be a point, look at this here, there will be a point wherein you are going to achieve that particular balance wherein say the speed might be equal to earth's or at the desired rate that you want, okay? 
so that becomes our l1 point right let's go ahead and look at it this is the particular point that you're looking at a smaller orbit than the earth at a particular point both these forces are exactly at the level that you need now what happens you are receiving sunlight faster than the sun uh, faster than here on earth earth mein kitne minute mein aata hai sade 8 minute mein you are receiving sunlight there already at say 4 and a half 5 minutes okay it's around close to 1.5 million kilometers this distance okay so you can straight away understand that the, you are receiving sunlight faster at the same time you are able to position yourself in such a way that you do not fall in any shade right that say the other uh, particular uh, planets that are in front of you they do not hinder your view do you realize this this is the l1 point between the sun and the earth and being counterbalanced by the sun's gravitational force its own pull and earth's minor gravitational force okay this is our l1 point now what is our l2 point in this case your object is behind the earth what happens here now an area of shade is created look at this right you are looking at this whole area which is now in shade so what happens perfect position for the deep space missions you have like a mirror uh, like a backing behind you so you are able to see now in the darkness kyunki aise kya ho raha it's like looking into the torch how are you going to look into the space if you have a torch behind you you need some darkness to observe no so l2 is the point just behind the surface behind the uh, side of the earth okay so here you have the sun here you have the earth and here you have your mission okay so you are on the night side of the earth you are behind the earth in the darkness okay so here look at this located 1.5 million kilometers directly behind the earth great place from which to observe the larger universe so all of these herschel planck gaia web telescope okay all of these are placed here in the l2 area this area of darkness ab aapko sun dekhna hai to l1 mein jao earth ye space isme deep space dekhna hai l2 mein jao okay then you have l3 wherein you are what behind the sun now look at this this is earth this is the sun now you are behind the sun pehle kya tha l2 mein kya tha aap yahan pe the you are behind the earth in l3 you go behind the sun opposite earth so what happens straight away you are blocked from seeing the earth you can't see the earth earth can't see you essentially you are at a particular stability these three particular bodies they are coming together now so you cannot see it from the earth okay so please understand now l1 l2 or l3 are the called the meta stable or in fact it is called like a partially stable okay so you have these five lagrange points l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 what you find is that these are called essentially the unstable points whereas l4 and l5 are the stable points now we will i'll understand i'll make you understand how that is what do you understand in all these cases that i told you l1 l2 l3 you are essentially at a say at a particular point where there is particular uh, stability that you have achieved from both sides the gravity of this side the gravity of that side your own centrifugal motion plus your coriolis now that you have achieved that stability you need to keep firing your rocket boosters to make sure that you have that stability at all times okay because again you are you are you are going through your own motions so rocket boosters are required in l1 l2 l3 to make sure that you ach keep achieving that stability on a real time basis whereas in l4 and l5 rocket boosters are not required once you are lodged there you are there now how does that happen let's understand l4 and l5 now so here look at this now you have a first look at the sun so its gravitational field is acting something like this then you have the earth's gravitational field that works alongside it right so are you seeing this this is the gravitational fields that are being formed here straight away what you find is this particular zone becomes an area where there there is no particular force acting similarly this particular area becomes a zone where there is no particular force acting you see 
This is in fact the whole plane on which the unstable ones are. The moment you go above, you are stable again. Because again, the sun's gravitational force, the earth's gravitational force, they are converging at that particular point. They are interacting, which means there is a zone being created. That zone on both the sides, L4 and L5. Okay, And these are essentially at an angle of 60 degrees, both sides. 60 degrees planar, you know, going this way, that is L4 and L5. Clear? Hai? L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5, upar niche. Theek hai? Let's look at this now. L4 and L5 lie at 60 degrees ahead and behind the earth. Now, they are resistant to the gravitational perturbations. Why? Because again, this is where both the gravitational fields of earth and sun are colliding, which is why you have a zone being created. Wherein, understand it like a, say, a bowl. Okay. You have a huge bowl. Put a ball in it. Eventually, say, if you roll it down, what happens? It will travel, travel, travel and then settle at the base. Right? That is your L4 and L5. That particular zone of stability where it has gone ahead and settled into the base. Now, nothing more is acting on it. Okay? That is L4 and L5. Yaad rakho ye India is putting it at the L1 place, the L1 Lagrange point. Clear? L1 is between the earth and the sun. What you are essentially looking at to do is to go ahead of the earth and then study the sun from a little close. You know, you are about a coronal mass injection that you have, solar flares that you hear about. Or say how exactly, because again, quite literally, sun is the center of our universe. So it makes sense for us to understand the sun because again, everything is co-dependent on the sun. Right? So this is why India is going ahead and doing it. Now, has any other country done it so far? Yes. There is a particular instance called the SOHO mission. Okay. The SOHO mission is already operating at the L1 position. Okay. A SOHO mission was between the European Space Agency and NASA, where they have already put in a body that is going and studying the sun from up close. India now is looking to join that club, sending its own solar mission. To study the sun up close. Good morning, Chandani. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Clear hai aapko? Okay. So, let's look at. Now, the payloads. We'll do an extensive class on the payloads. Okay. We'll do an extensive class on the payloads. Because again, to understand this, you need to understand all of this. What is coronal heating? What is coronal mass injection? Okay. What are the dynamics of space weather? You know. How are you looking to study space weather? You know, you must be aware. That space is all vacuum, right? This is what we have been told since our childhood. That space is all vacuum, that there is nothing there, it's complete silence. Then how come we are going to learn about space weather? Okay. So again, very important from the civil service perspective. We'll do an extensive class on this. Today, I just want to focus our understanding on L1 to L5. Once you have these ready, then you'll understand what India is looking to achieve by sending these seven payloads. Okay. The VELC is of the most importance. It deserves a thorough look. I don't want to compromise on the understanding. So, we'll do a class on this. Today though, focus your understanding on L1 to L5. Okay. So, now this is what the whole uh, payloads uh, mission objective is, what it is looking to study, what it is going to carry. For now, your understanding should be that PSLV is the launch vehicle being used, which will be used to transfer it to the L1 orbit. L1 say aapko kya expectation hai, aapko hai abhi. Okay. Alternative name for L1 place. Lakam, it is called by L, uh, Lagrange points only because this was, uh, I think, discovered by the scientist. I don't know his country, which, uh, what is the country of his origin. But then these points, L1 to L5, are credited to him. So, which is why it is known as L1 to L5. Because the guy came up with the whole, you know, whole research. Okay. Okay. So, the trajectory again, if you have seen the news today also, our Chandrayaan mission after doing this, after, if this is the earth and this is the moon, well, it was in orbit so far, right? And today morning, it has gone ahead on its uh, journey finally to the moon. Till now, it was just achieving height. Orbital velocity was lete ja raha tha. So, this morning only, it has now finally headed off to the moon and I think it will uh, arrive in the moon's orbital uh, effect by say August the 5th. So, 4-5 days. You know, so why did India do this? Because again, it's cost effective, no? And the US, when they send it, it's direct boosters ke saathi paunchna unko straight line mein. 
we use Earth's gravitational pull to make it much more cost effective. Yes, this is why we use common sense rather than just going and polluting the whole space. Okay, so this is the whole point of this also. We'll discuss about it later. Let's look at these questions, guys. L4 and L5 are the only stable Lagrangian points. Remember, L1, L2, L3. I've told you they are called metastable, which means that they need to use rocket thrusters to maintain stability. If they do not use rocket thrusters, they become unstable. Right? Deep space observation telescopes use L2 point. Okay? Solar and heliospheric observatory, the SOHO project. Okay? And SOHO was jointly launched by the NASA and Roscosmos. Which of the above are incorrect? You will let me know. All the answers I have discussed in the previous 10-12 minutes. Clear? Alright, let's look at the next question. Okay, the primary launch vehicles, guys, please have a basic idea. Okay, very, very important. A host of discussions is happening on primary launch vehicles. Then you are looking at reusable launch vehicles. Right? What Elon, Musk is, uh, Elon Musk's company is doing. Right? So, again, this is something we'll do it in uh, detail also. But primary launch vehicles, say suppose today we have PSLV, it's called the workhorse of ISRO. Or today we have say the LVM, which will be used for the Gaganyaan mission. Okay. So these are our primary launch vehicles, which we use to get our machines, our satellites up there. So again, other countries also, other space agencies also have their launch vehicles. So again, European Space Agency, is it Ariane 5? Yes or no? Roscosmos, does it use the long march? Now the name should give you a hint, huh? The name should give you a hint. Which country could it be? Okay. So use the Japan Space Agency, Space Launch System, ISRO. Which of the above are incorrectly matched? You will let me know. Plus, let me know the correct answers also. Okay. Kiska Konsai launch vehicle. I have a good idea of this. Okay. All right. So, uh, this is my Telegram channel, by the way. If you're watching this for the first time, go ahead, join me on Telegram. We are uh, expanding by the day and all of the information of my sessions is first shared there. In fact, credit to the Telegram channel and the members of this group that it was because of their participation in a poll that I had put up that the whole concept of the Aranya series, yes, the Aranya series of uh, that I discussed yesterday, the opening class of this, it came up thanks to the members of this group. You know, it was only to their credit. I just gave them an uh, option, and then finally the consensus was that we should go ahead with the Aranya series. After which, we will look into the Seaside series. Okay? So, again, go ahead and be a part of this. And I am finally on Instagram also, guys. Okay? There I am. Now, we will see if we But I am on Instagram. And so, if you would like to join me for, say, a particular discussions or strategy guidance, go ahead and connect with me because I know email is a little tedious. So, what I have decided is going forward, the Telegram we will use for, say, PDF distribution, questions. Uh, I am going to upload model answers for the questions of the environment series. I am also looking at polls and all of these uh, MCQs being posted on Telegram. The main answer writing that we of, often do in this session, you are going to still email me your answers. However, if you need a particular doubt resolved instantaneously or if you have a strategy uh, guidance that you need, any sort of preparation related doubt that I can help you with, connect with me here on uh, Instagram and I will be more than happy to get in touch with you. Okay. So again, scan this and it will take you. Meanwhile, this is my email ID. This is where you send in your mains answers. Okay. So, uh, in the last two classes, that is Saturday and yesterday, I had put forward the questions and I received close to 50 mains answers. So, I am going to require some time. So, I am going to uh, not give you any mains question today. Okay. Today is just going to be the MCQs. Uh, allow me time till this evening to get, to you, get back to the individual people who send me their answers. And uh, tomorrow, I will have uh, another mains question for you. Okay. All right. Now, let's look at section 144 in the news today because, well, uh, in areas around Delhi NCR, it has seen uh, some uh, communal disturbance. And so, section 144 has been imposed by the district magistrate of, say, Faridabad, Gurgaon, all of these particular districts. Now, I am not aware of the facts of the case. I, am, I have no information whatsoever about it. So, I am not going to at all go into that direction. I am interested in understanding the policy. The policy is section 144 and how is it different from say curfew, okay. Common sense questions that the UPSC will ask you. What is the difference between 144 and curfew? So let's understand 144 first. 
it's an emergency provision firstly you cannot go ahead and just you know the dc chai peete peete ke aaj 144 lagate can't do that why even though it is say an administrative decision by the district commissioner the district magistrate the sub divisional magistrate the executive magistrate or the police commissioner why am i telling you this please please understand first who can go ahead and impose this either the district commissioner the district magistrate same people different names you are looking at the sub divisional magistrate iska junior the executive magistrate similar rank okay or you can have the police commissioner or a representative of him why am i telling you these things because what happens is in india when it comes to district administration there are two models that are in place one is the dual system okay the dual system is where administration and judiciary or say some judicial functions are with the dc and law and order is with the sp this is the dual the dual system of district administration however in some metropolitan areas and some special areas you find that commissionerates are created pata hai na commissionerates so for example in noida which is just adjoining to uh, new delhi okay noida has a commissionerate okay major city uh, provinces or not provinces areas in uttar pradesh are divided under the commissionerate system why is that there because again certain reasons you know it improves say administration law and order is much more regularized so what happens in the commissionerate system that the police officer also is given such quasi judicial powers okay that you are given powers to go ahead and impose section 144 okay so who can go ahead and impose it obviously the executive people are there the is the state civil service guy they can do it but in a commissionerate system either the police commissioner or a representative authorized by him so some D dcp rank or dsp rank whatever the level that is decided by the police commissioner can go ahead and enforce 144 okay so now it empowers dc sdm executive magistrate to go ahead and prevent such issues you know if you are apprehending that the law and order is going to be vitiated that there is some problem that you are anticipating 144 ab lagate ho what happens in that case firstly there is a little restriction on say gatherings three or more people not allowed okay unnecessary movement is not allowed okay you are looking you can still go out you can still go to your office no problems but then the legal provisions are there only if the number is crossed okay at the same time internet can be uh, cut off in 144 okay so let's look at it firstly there needs to be written order and this 144 can target one individual or a set of individuals or the entire population of the area okay so first the major misconception is ki 144 lagta hai to sirf area ke liye lagta hai nahi bande ke liye bhi lag sakta hai if it is just one individual that say the dc is convinced that his him being out will cause problems 144 can be imposed his restriction his freedom of movement can be restricted the other way to do it is preventive custody aane mein le chalo usko okay so 144 can be done for individuals set of individuals plus the whole population now at a time once you have as the dc has gone ahead and said okay 144 is in place it is considered to be in place for 2 months okay it is considered to be in place for 2 months until and unless another written order is issued by the dc saying okay no more 144 however it cannot cross the time period of 6 months samajh rahe ho 2 months it it's considered to be once the order is issued until say the dc after 7 days goes okay under my hand and seal the 144 that was imposed on such and such date stands say dismissed or null and void from today or has been rescinded from today you know order issued khatam 144 out <clears throat> okay so your restrictions on movement carrying arms and unlawful assembly okay three or more people if you are caught wo aapko thana mein leke jayenge theek hai so it remains in force for two months unless the state government considers it necessary to extend it but it cannot cross 6 months okay 2 months to 6 months however it can be lesser than 2 months if a dc passes an order 
just his same he also issues the order he he says okay i feel convinced that 144 is no more necessary 144 is finished then now look at it this is the order that was issued yesterday in gurugram okay have a look at it i'll share this in my telegram channel and so you shall see the various clauses that are issued there okay that you can still go ahead and carry say a particular uh, religious uh, objects that you have that can be considered to be say objects of threat you have religions that have say particular facilities for carrying swords or small knives so what does the order say you can still continue to carry it because again 144 in the previous slide carrying arms so the first question that should come to your mind what about the arms that are have a religious connotation the order says that yes you can continue to carry your arms but if you use them say in uh, the law and order situation if you contribute to the deterioration of law and order situation then that right is straight away infringed then you are considered at par with other writers okay so go through the order the order is a, like a straight away a, a lakshmi kant's practical paper in front of you so i'll share this in my telegram channel have a look at the different clauses okay this is the dc nishant kumar yadav he has gone ahead under his hand and seal and issued the whole order look at it study it okay then you'll understand what exactly 144 it restricts for us what it imposes what's the liability on the citizens that is put okay so now what is the issue with it the court has observed that you cannot go ahead and arbitrarily uh, enforce 144 that there needs to be uh, a good reason to do it because again at the same time you're restricting the rights the civil liberties of the people however the supreme court also has upheld this saying that it is under the reasonable restrictions that we study in the uh, polity yes reasonable restrictions so 144 is a part of the reasonable restrictions that can be enforced on citizens okay so it gives absolute power to a magistrate that may be exercised unjustifiably there is no immediate remedy that's the problem you can move a writ petition in the high court but then by the time you move the writ petition damage would already have been done okay so the lack of immediate resolution or grievance redressal is a major criticism. Okay. So you can approach the high court for a writ petition, but by the time you go ahead and get your particular remedy from there, your rights could already have been infringed, trampled. So that is one of the primary criticisms of section 144, that it prov provides the district commissioner or the district magistrate or the police commissioner with inordinate power in disrupting the lives of the citizens. Clear? But then again, it's very necessary when it is like, you know, when it's a deteriorating law and order situation, uh, 144 is the first recourse for the district administration. Thereafter, once you have 144 in place, thereafter, the next stage of this is the curfew. What happens in curfew? No public movement. Okay. Absolutely no public movement. There will be certain hours in which the public can come out for essential commodities. Okay. Kuch ghante hi, ab wo bhi announce kiya jayega district administration dwara. That yes, say from 5 to 6 p.m., the normal uh, janta can come out and get their ration, their pani, their kerosene, whatever. Okay. And thereafter, what happened here now? Huh. And uh, the movement is obviously completely restricted. And what you're also looking at, is uh, only the police plus government officials for necessary for law and order are allowed okay so again government officials does not mean that someone from the fisheries department can also be out no if you have a direct bearing on the law and order you are allowed at the same time media is allowed okay free press has to be allowed so media is allowed hospitals are allowed to be open Okay, but everything else remains shut. Okay, in 144, liquor shops are normally not closed. In a curfew situation, everything is closed. Only hospitals, essential supplies, services are open. Fire brigade, thana khula rahega, baaki sab aap ghar pe baitho. Okay, so 144 is the first recourse for uh, the district commissioner. After that is the curfew option. Understand this? Clear? So answer this for me now. In a commissionerate system, Section 144 may be imposed by a police officer. Commissionerate system encompasses the dual model of district administration. Identify the incorrect statement. I have given you the differences between the dual model 
versus the commissionerate system. Okay. Go ahead today after the class, spend five minutes and have a look at the areas in India, the particular districts or the ranges in India that have a commissionerate system. Okay. Then you will understand why they have been imposed. Normally, they are imposed to streamline administration, to give the commissioner power of law and order at the same time, say, uh, quasi-judicial powers, giving them the civil administration powers. Okay. Why is the, what's the usage of it? We can discuss it uh, threadbare, say, in tomorrow morning's class. If, again, it's a doubt, you will let me know in the comment box. If you understood the four topics that we discussed today, uh, especially the L1 to L5, very, very important for prelims perspective, guys. Given that ISRO is doing something good or the other every second day, you know, it's a rock star organization. So, as civil service aspirants, you need to be aware of what the rock star organization is doing, which means you need to be aware of each and every detail. L1 and L5, L25, L3, L4, L5, very, very important. So, if you understood this, if you if your doubts are there, please let me know in the comment box. I'll be happy to address them. Or else, leave me a like. I really appreciate it. You know, it's a lot of hard work uh, uh, getting these notes out. But I only do it for the love of teaching, to be honest. I just love being here every morning, interacting with my students and learning together with them. Okay. So, leave me a like if, if it helped you. And I shall see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Meanwhile, uh, leave the answers for uh, the questions that I have for you in the comment box. And don't forget, tomorrow evening, 9 p.m. is also the first class, official class of uh, the Aranya series, the Environment and Ecology. So, I hope that I'll have your participation then too. Theke? Have a wonderful day, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. I have a couple of minutes. Any questions from uh, today's class? Any doubts? Anything at all? Please, guys, make sure that L1 to L5 pe dhyan dena, theke, please, because that is important. Okay, Aditya, L1 mission, the payloads of it, we will do it threadbare in say tomorrow's class. We'll get it done. So that your Chandrayaan is done, your Mangalyaan is done, your Surya Yan or L1, Aditya L1 mission is also done. Okay. All right, guys, have, have a wonderful day. Stay safe and I shall uh, see you tomorrow morning. No, Deepak, I'm not disheartened. Not at all. I have, I have your company now. How can I be disheartened? Yes. Thanks though. Thank you so much. All right. Kal milte hai subah. Bye.